Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Friday the 13th trading session. <laughs> Let's hope that it's not going to be a horror show today. All right, so the markets have just opened up. And it looks like it was a relatively quiet open. If we take a look here at the NASDAQ, you can see it's pretty quiet through the overnight. The NQ in a little bit of a decline yesterday going into the close. Closed around 43.30. And that's more or less where we've opened this morning. <laughs> so my, unlike the other mornings this week, we don't really have an opening gap to consider. Uh, we are getting a little bit of a a buy out of the open. Just trying to get a handle on what's going on here. Let the buyers and the sellers kind of sort themselves out. Rod asked a question uh, just before the room opened here. Rod asked, Eric, when you have a chance, could you explain the four bar consolidation again and when it's appropriate to consider the signal as valid. Well, the four arrow consolidation pattern is a pattern that we have on the Hawk Scalper. And the four arrow consolidation essentially is a bull flag in an uptrend or a bear flag in a downtrend. So it's going to look like this in an uptrend. The market's going to go up and then we're going to hit a consolidation phase where very likely the market will have this type of shape to it, after which we anticipate that we're going to get a breakout higher. Within this consolidation period, the market's going to normally print four signals. And on that fourth signal, that's when we're going to get most um, interested in buying the market up. Sometimes the four arrow consolidation pattern does not have that uh, bull flag to it. Actually, I'll leave that one up. Does not have the bull flag to it. Rather, it rallies and then ends up going a little bit more sideways before the next move higher. But even in this situation, we're still going to get four signals within the pattern. The four arrow consolidation that happens rarely, which I'm not too keen on, sees this type of situation. Where the market rallies and then it starts to get this little bit of an upward slope. And then we get four arrows printing. Out of these three patterns, these two, these two are the most reliable in my opinion. They're the easiest to spot and they tend to have the most consistent follow through. In a downtrend, of course, it would be just the opposite. In a downtrending market, we would be looking for the consolidation to have this type of shape to it and then the market continue lower like this. So we're getting sell signals within here. And we would be looking to enter on the fourth signal. And just like with the bull trend, sometimes you're going to get a sideways pattern, like a channel, before the next leg lower. And that too is going to have four arrows before the market finally resumes its downtrend. And of course, occasionally we get the sloping one. And out of the three, again, this is my least favorite, where we get this type of thing going on, and then the market finally continues lower. So this is what your four arrow consolidation looks like in a downtrend with these two here being the higher probability ones. 
Okay, it just so happens that this morning we have a four arrow consolidation in the Hawk. Have you noticed it already? It's right here. We have the market is in an uptrend and then it starts to hit this consolidation phase. And we have one signal, two signals, and now you're saying, well, wait a minute, Eric, there's only three signals there. There's only three arrows. Yes, that's true. But the pattern remains the same. This signal right here should have triggered. We actually produced, if you want, you can count the signals. We actually produced five signals, two of which did not trigger, three of which did. I would not ignore this signal simply because I was short one arrow. In fact, if you're looking at a faster moving market like crude oil or gold, very often we only get um, three arrows. Um, let me bring crude oil over here real quick. I don't think we're missing anything yet. Um, and I'll show you here. Here's a four arrow consolidation pattern on crude. The market is in a downtrend. We hit this consolidation phase and we've only got three signals. One, two, three, and then crude goes on that third signal. So you need to be aware of the pattern and don't get hung up that the market has only produced three arrows when in fact you're looking at a near perfect pattern here on the Hawk and the NASDAQ. Right? So we've got the market in an uptrend. We've hit this consolidation period. And then we get the breakout. Now what you may have noticed on the crude example, let me bring this back here real quick, is that the signal actually came off of a yellow bar. And you're probably scratching your head saying, well, Eric, you said you don't take yellow bar signals. That is true. However, the four arrow consolidation pattern is such a strong setup that I will take it off of the yellow bar. It is the only setup I will take on a yellow bar in the Hawk. So that's something to bear in mind. The yellow bar does not negate the signal. If the form is there, what the form is telling me is that the market is in a rally. There's a little bit of profit taking or, or whatnot going on. But if the market recovers, I can be pretty sure there's going to be at least one more push higher. And because we're scalping, our profit targets are not all that ambitious or out of reach most times. So relatively easy to get to. Here is a four arrow consolidation that had a little bit more of a sideways drift to it. But the principle remains the same. We have one, two, three, four arrows. And then the market gave us a little bit of heat, but eventually went higher. You're also going to notice that sometimes the four arrow consolidation pattern actually ends up overlapping with another pattern. Here we have the red bar buy. Here we have a macro pullback followed by a red bar buy. So sometimes the signals end up squishing each other. <clears throat> now here... This is not a four arrow consolidation pattern. Even though it tends to have one of those shapes that I mentioned to you, if we get beyond four arrows, there's no such thing as a five arrow consolidation or a six arrow consolidation or an eight arrow consolidation. If we start to get into this type of situation where the market is just producing signal after signal after signal with no follow through, then whatever the previous trend was no longer has any influence over the market. Okay, that's important to remember because the four arrow consolidation only shows you a pause. It doesn't show you, um, you know, a change in trend or anything like that. Here's a nice little four arrow consolidation on the way down. 
So we have one, two, three, fourth signal is the one we're interested in taking. Technically, it's also a green bar sell, and that's the one that the market resumed the momentum. Had this gone on a little further and gone, you know, like this, I would no longer consider the signal valid, even though it may still be within this channel that we're looking at, this little bit of a pullback channel. If we get beyond four arrows, then the market is, it's not recovering that momentum. Yeah, like Tony says, we, we just had one in the uh, NQ. Uh, William's asking, can you repeat the significance of the trend prior to the channel? Sure, William. All a four arrow consolidation is showing you is a brief pause in the action. So here we have a market that is in a definite downtrend. And what is happening down here at 4304 is that all of a sudden, the buyers decide that it's time to buy. This is a good price to buy at. Part of the reason the market has been in a downtrend is that there's either a lack of buying or there's very aggressive selling. It can only be one, one or the other. And you'll notice whenever the market gets a trend and then you hit this little bit of a pause, you're going to get this four arrow consolidation pattern. One, two, three, four. There's my signal. Signal engaged. Yes, it did produce one more, but I'm already short from here. If this signal did not engage, I would not be chasing the fifth signal, even though it did work out. All right, so we've got a four arrow consolidation right there. What happens after that? The market resumes the trend. And then we start to hit this sideways pattern again. And depending how you structured it, it may be a four arrow consolidation this way, although I would probably do it like this. One, two, three. This one went on the third signal, which also happens to be a macro pullback. If you chose to consider your consolidation starting at this point, well, then technically you have your four arrows. Personally, I'd probably see it like this. I'm looking for a pullback or for the market to stop the downtrend. And, of course, the opposite is true if we were in an uptrend. So all a four-arrow consolidation shows us is there could be some short-term profit taking here. Um, there could be a little bit more active buying going on. And what the resumption of the trend shows us is that, the, in this case, the sellers clearly still have control. If they don't take control of the market after the fourth arrow, then the sellers don't have control. And it's very likely we're going to see the market drift higher, perhaps turn into a first micro-macro cross higher, and we'll actually start producing buy signals. So here we had another leg lower. Actually, you could have also drawn your four arrow consolidation out this way on this one. The market starts to continue lower, another downtrend, and then here we go again. One, two, Oop, did I miss a signal? One, two, three, and then here's number four that I'm shorting on. So that's the one I'm interested in selling. Now, again, you know, the, uh, you do get some signal overlap. You may have decided that the, three, uh, the green bar sell was enough for you to, to short, so you could have actually shorted a couple of ticks early. And then the market comes down, and now we hit another consolidation. And we've got one, two, three, and where's the fourth arrow? Oh, there's no fourth arrow. 
So the buyers started to dig in around this 4305 area. Sellers recovered the trend for a few minutes anyways. And then the buyers got serious about digging in again, produced another consolidation, but the sellers never regained control. So that's why we're looking for four arrows. Um, two arrows aren't enough unless it happens to develop into a macro pullback, but that's an entirely different signal. Uh, five, six, seven arrows are too many. Again, they don't show uh, any serious commitment on the part of the sellers. And then once the four arrow consolidation fails to produce, well then now all of a sudden we start looking for um, buy signals and we've produced the first micro macro cross higher. Okay, William says um, or asks I was referring to the statement about when there's more than four arrows. Okay, so I'll just touch it on it again briefly. If there's more than four arrows, it shows a lack of commitment to resuming the trend, and you should be suspicious of that. If you're getting five or six or seven or eight arrows, the earlier trend no longer has any influence on the market because you're producing sell signal after sell signal after sell signal, and nobody is selling. I've mentioned this before, but there's a half a dozen parameters working behind the scenes before you even get a warning dot to print. So when your conditions are right that you're producing a sell signal and there's no selling and you produce you know, more sell signals and there's still no selling, that is a definite lack of commitment on the part of the sellers. You have all the conditions teed up for a sell signal and yet no sell signal. Um, Stephen was asking, Steve asks, what is the difference from the arrows and the triangles? The arrow simply shows that the hash mark has been engaged. So the computers being what they are, uh, when we were doing the programming and I was working through the parameters of the hawk with Ben, I was saying, well, I don't want the signal to trip until this happens or that happens. And Ben said, no, Eric, he says, this is a computer. We have to give it specific parameters. So the hash mark will always print one tick below the signal bar or one tick above the signal bar. The arrow shows you that the market has moved at least one tick above or below the signal bar. That's what the arrow shows you. So it shows you a little bit of momentum, at least enough momentum for one tick. We've got a one tick trend. Here's a, here's a good example. We produce the signal bar. Here, I'll roll it over so it looks like we're doing it real time. Okay, so we've got the warning dot. We've got the triangle hash mark. Hey, we caught a one tick trend. <laughs> the bar went exactly one tick lower, engaged the hash mark, and produced an arrow. So that's what the arrow means, is that you've at least had a one tick trend <laughs> for all the good that'll do you, but that's what it shows you. All right, so here we are producing another four arrow consolidation, right? So we're getting a little bit of sideways drift now. And we've got one signal, two signals, three signals. Here was signal number four. Yes, it's off of a yellow bar. I would be a little bit 
leery about this one because we may have seen our retest of the high right here. With all these types of patterns, we're looking, if not for a resumption of the trend, at the very least a retest. And then if we get that failure, well, then it's likely the market's going to reverse and prices will head lower. But it is still a four arrow consolidation. And yes, it's off the yellow bar. And did we get enough to get to our profit target? Oh, we did too. And then the market reverses and this is where we're at now. So, it is a high probability signal. And the best thing you can do is scroll back through your chart and see how many you can find on your own. And if you want, you can even send them to me and say, hey, Eric, is this a four arrow consolidation? And the easy way to do that is to right click on your chart, go down here to email, or pardon me, to image, and you can either save it as and then attach it to an email or you can even email directly from from your computer you can just put in my email if you send it to eric at indicatorwarehouse.com adam gets it first and then he sends it to me so you can send it to eric at support and resistance.com and i will get it right away Oh, glad to hear it, William. William says he's loving the support and resistance manual. Well, I'm glad. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, to write. Jim is doing all right here. He says he got two trades on the YM. He's up 40 ticks on two contracts and 20 ticks on crude. Nicely done, Jim. Yes, it does seem like crude and uh, the index markets are in sync today. Jim says they're more in line with each other and he shot me some advanced decline numbers earlier about 1350 on the buy and 1250 on the sell so a fairly neutral market to start oh yes well done Marlene hey you guys are knocking it out of the park here this morning uh, Marlene says that was a nice short signal on the Raptor, and you are absolutely correct. It's this soft edge cell right there, and the soft edge cell must always be preceded by a test of the extreme. So you had a couple different ways to gauge this. You, you could have considered that little hiccup there a test of the extreme, and you would not be wrong. And then you got a second chance right here, and you came back and produced that short signal. Our objective is normally the hard edge of the band, and that's exactly where it went to. So, yeah, nicely done, Marlene. Shoot, I can retire. You guys are on fire. <laughs> you got this stuff down pat. All right, I'm just taking a look here, making sure I didn't miss anybody's question or comment because there was a little bit uh, stuff going on here when I was explaining the four arrow consolidation. And I think I got everybody's question. Yeah, William says, so on those situations when you take a four arrow consolidation and it doesn't work out, a loss is okay. Yeah, you know, the signal is valid. So here the signal is producing. Um, again, at this stage, I would be a little hesitant that perhaps this little failure right here may be the test of the extreme. So I'm going to try to leave my stop a little bit further back. The markets rarely turn on a dime, right? So if this market d is starting to fall apart, I should get at least one more clue and one more opportunity to roll my stop up. And then I didn't need to worry about it. We did, at the very least, hit a break-even trigger, 
but we did a little better. We hit our profit target and then things started to unwind. And now we're getting a first micro macro cross lower. In fact, uh, it, if you took it on the hash mark, you would have been engaged right here, but it, we don't have a lot of structure, right? We do have some old support right here, so there's a very realistic chance the market may trade up to there. Therefore, to take this trade, because we started the day in an uptrend, I would recommend placing my stop above the high of the morning, if at all possible. Oh, see, yeah, Marlene uh, <laughs> just asked that. Would you take the first micro macro cross because the market is now in an uptrend? Yes, I would. <clears throat> and I'll show you here in a sec. Uh, I just pointed that out. If you're concerned about the trend messing you up, you still need to consider the validity of the signal. So dial down your risk amount or just go in with a onesie. You know, go into manual mode, throw a single on it, and risk it as far back as you can. Alternatively, you can you can do this type of thing where it, if you're getting an obvious little bear flag, even though it's not a four arrow consolidation yet, draw a trend line across the lows and reserve your entry until you're on the other side of the trend line. So what I'm doing is, if the trend line holds, I've got mine one tick below the trend line. Or if you feel more comfortable, go two ticks below the trend line. That would also put me below this little low right here, which is one tick below the trend line. I'll go one tick below the low of that bar. All I'm looking for here is a, some renewed momentum to bring me into the trade. But yes, the signal is valid. It is still a high probability signal. But given that we are in an uptrend, we may take a little bit of heat before the sellers step in again. Yeah, and like Jim says, you can always add to a position if you're correct. You can always scale in. But when I was looking at this before and the signal's printing, yes, it's a valid first micro macro cross. Yes, I will take it because it is a first micro macro cross. However, because of the uptrend and the chance the market may try to reach back, I'm either going to uh, delay my entry until we get down here, in which case I could run a, a little bit of a tighter stop or I'll take the entry on the hash mark and I'll run my stop up here. So it looks like we got slipped a tick there. And that's going to affect our profit objective. So I'm demonstrating now taking the earlier entry this is the macro pullback signal. And I need to keep my stop a little bit deeper now because, see, we have this support over here. And it's very likely, now that we've got the breakout, we're going to get the retest before the resumption. If you were a seller, well, we are sellers now, but where would you be more interested in selling? Do you want to sell down here, or would you rather sell up here where you can sell at a better price? Well, you probably want to sell up here, and that's exactly what's happening. It's okay to wait for a signal, too, you know. So look at this. One, two, three. Oh, four arrows. And look at where the fourth arrow printed. Yes, it's a yellow bar, but again, it's a strong enough pattern that I will take it off of a yellow bar. 
this now is the last chance for the sellers to recover the trend and look at that move out of there this is exactly where the sellers were looking to recover the trend from voila so once you become more familiar with your charts and you get a little bit more familiar with the price activity itself you're going to look at this and you're going to say yeah it's a first micro macro cross I'll limit my exposure to the trade I'm only going to go in I'll, I'll dial down my risk amount and then when it retraces up here and you see the four arrow consolidation you say whoa that's a that's a stronger signal right there's a really good chance the market's going to try to move lower from there um, I'll go back with my regular 2% risk exposure. I can get into the trade and I can cover it, you know, relatively close. And you get a, a real quick little easy scalp through there. Now what's happening? Hmm? What's happening now, class? Do, you, do we think the buyers or the sellers are getting stronger? What do we think? Okay, we get, I'm getting votes for buyers and sellers. <laughs> well, I like to consider whoever controlled the last swing as being in control of the market. So when this swing happened here, the buyers were technically trying to take control of the market, trying to take control of the market. When this swing right here occurred, the sellers were clearly still in control. But then when we got down here, the buyers all of a sudden took control because the sellers were no longer able to make a new low. So then the sellers tried very briefly to force the market lower again, and now here come the buyers showing a little bit more strength. So if I get a first micro macro cross signal to buy now, I would be a little bit more interested in taking that. There is a potential here that the buyers are going to follow through given that they've stepped in here and they've stepped in here. Now we're back to this familiar territory. And again, like I said before, if you're a seller, where are you interested in selling? Oh, you're interested in selling anywhere around 4349 you'll sell 43.50, you'll even sell 43.51. So we're going to see the market probably hop up here a little bit. The sellers will start to knock them down, and then it will be decision time for the buyers. How serious are the buyers about resuming this trend? Oh, Marlene says we have a red bar buy on the eagle, and yes, we do. You're absolutely right. There's a very nice red bar buy on the eagle. So it looks like the buyers are very serious about resuming the trend, and at the very least, testing the, the high of the morning. And there they go. Absolutely. Right. While we're letting that unfold, Ryman asks, can you please show me how to uh, get the Geiger counter to sit on top of my charts instead of underneath? Sure. Uh, and this is going to be true for anything that's on your chart. There's uh, like 10 layers on your chart, very much like a Photoshop type arrangement. So click on your tool to make it active. Hold down your shift key, and then if your mouse has a wheel, roll the wheel. So you see if I roll it to level 10 of 10, then it's at the very back, and everything is going to be in front of my Geiger counter. Level 10 is the furthest, furthest back level. So now if I hold my shift key, 
and I roll it up to level one, well, level one is the very front, the very top, and that will put it on top of everything. And that's, uh, like I say, that's true for all, everything that's on your chart. If you wanted to, um, oh, I don't know, if you want to put the macro line in front of everything, um, you just click on the macro line and you hold down your shift key and then you roll your mouse and it's going to tell you, you know, what level you're on. And you can adjust it accordingly. Okay, so now here's that first micro macro cross signal. The sellers allowed the market to get up to 4354 before they started stomping on the buyers. Now at this point, I might consider the market maybe entering a trading range. We had a big move up. We had a strong move down. Now the buyers are coming back. Um, the, they really do need to resume the trend at this point, but it's still not clear whether they will resume the trend or whether the market's merely going to enter a trading range. Therefore, we once again need to take steps to protect ourselves. If at all possible, the best stop is down here. Oh, I can do it. Because if the market is in a trading range, well, where is it going to trade to? Well, it's going to try to trade down here, isn't it? So this is what I need to try to ride out. Uh, barring that one, this swing right here is a pretty strong one because that's where the buyers came in again. If you can't afford that one, then the crest in the macro line or the dip, I should say, in the macro line is also a good place to cover. Um, but because I might be thinking the market's going to enter some sort of trading range here, this again would be one that perhaps you want to dial down your risk amount or maybe just go in with a onesie. And let's see, did we get our profit objective? No, they failed. And now it's, okay, buyers, where are you? Oh, and look, see where the buyers tried to come in? They tried to come in right here. Notice the width of the bar. And had I put my stop below the very low, I would still be in the trade. But this is really starting to shape up like a trading range today. Okay, so now the sellers are going to give it a go. First micro macro cross, very rare. That does not work out. So we've been paying off to the short side. Very often, if I'm paying off in one direction, if the market's paying in one direction, I'll stay with that side. Actually, if I suspect it's in the trading range, I'm going to stay in manual mode. I'm just going to throw a onesie in. Right now, I'm going to place my entry right there. And as we get higher, I'll have a little bit of room to capture a profit before I get back down to these lows. All right, so there's the first micro macro cross. I'm going to try to grab that one just to show you. <laughs> Jim says, go to oil. It's selling. <laughs> Yeah, we did get a nice signal here on oil. Here's oil, uh, crude oil on the Falcon. Oops. Nice little trend change signal. Actually, they're waffling a little bit. It's starting to look a lot like a roller coaster. And I think I just got filled on my short, so let me bring that up. Well, it looks like we got slipped a tick again. 
Now, this is not the ideal place to be selling from, is it? If we are, in fact, in a trading range, we don't want to sell at the bottom of the channel. If we suspect the market's in a trading range, we usually want to let it break out, retest, and then, oops, stupid thing, and then um, sell. Which is why I had to run my stop as deep as I did. Now, in this case, it worked out, so it seems between the combination of the failed first micro macro cross higher and the successful short signals, it does appear as though the sellers um, are the dominant force today. Well, let's see now how low the buyers allow them to go. I thought we were going to see it drift a little bit lower. But now that we've broken this 4340-ish area, it looks like the at the moment the buyers are only allowing them to get as low as 4337, and then they're starting to buy it up. Here on the Eagle, we now have a rule of three signal, don't we? And it is preceded by a retest of the highs. Nothing wrong with taking a second push on this signal because, again, if we suspect the market's in a trading range, it's just going to be bouncing back and forth, back and forth. So go ahead, let the signal engage. You're going to notice on your eagle that almost every signal that prints flinches at one time or another. So here the signal, oh, sorry, that one flinched before it printed here this one engaged see that little tail on there I know that the market retreated at least a little bit here's another one it engaged it retreated a little bit this is the exact same thing but opposite so the market engaged I now know the current limit of the sellers or conversely where the buyers are going to become more, most active. What I suspect is going to happen here is we're going to get one more retest and then we'll see whether in fact the sellers control the market and if they do we could get a rather substantial move lower here. So can I cover it above the high? Yes I can. I'm going to throw my order in now just so I have it parked but um, this will be very important that we make a swing below the high here, below this 43, 54, 55 area. If we get up here, say, to 43.50 and the market pivots again and takes out the low, we could easily see the market fall well, let's say in the middle of here somewhere where the hard edge started to crest, maybe 43, 15, 43, 16, 17. I bet you we've got a support and resistance line here there too. Let's see. Um, 43, 20 is the median line. So that would be a, a probable target. Yeah, William says, lost on the first micro macro cross up. Thought since we had an uptrend prior, it would continue. Couldn't place a stop all the way to the bottom, so took the yellow bar swing. Got to write the journal loss. Um, but you know what, William? Don't beat yourself up too much on that one because your logic was spot on. There was nothing wrong with your reasoning. Um, I would have gathered the exact same that you know, the buyers were giving it a push. There was every reason to believe that the buyers would try to recover the trend. Um, normally what would happen 
is if you got engaged and then the market started moving against you, normally you would get uh, one more bounce through here. You would get a macro pullback attempt, uh, or at the very worst, you would get another yellow bar or something that would allow you to roll your stop from down here to here. That's what happens normally. In this instance, though, however, oh, see, we did get it. It occurred right here. We got a couple of them, a couple attempts to regain the trend, but nothing happened. And then the market continued lower, and then they tried again once they got here. This is why it's so important to contain your risk to a certain percentage of your capital so that when the market does this type of thing, where it doesn't give you a chance to perhaps adjust your stop a little bit, uh, even if you get tapped for the full amount, it's still an amount that you could afford to lose. And when you're keeping your journal, remember to also uh, make a note of the reasons why you took the trade. That's very important, more important than um, your overall profit or loss. Oh, nicely done, Jim. You guys are killing it today. Jim says, long uh, crude oil at 83, got eight ticks on two contracts. Nicely done. Yeah, there's a little bit of a hiccup there in crude. You're a braver soul than I am. So I think what Jim's looking at here is the, the market testing the lows, hitting here the primary support, and he was looking to take a little run up got in here at 83, bagged eight ticks. Well done. It's 80 bucks. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so looking for the, the buyers to give her one more push and then for the sellers to knock them down. So I would really like to see something near this 4350 area. Why 4350? Well, it would be pretty darn close to that trend line. Wow, crude had a little bit more spark to that rally than uh, than I think anybody anticipated. A little bit of a run up now to a macro pullback type scenario in crude. These yellow bars going into here are giving me pause only because, well, there was nothing coming into the market beforehand. You see, through the overnight. Oh, the entire overnight, nothing but chop, nothing but sideways trading. But we did get the first micro-macro cross to pay. Here's a macro pullback signal now. Problem with crude is I'd like to cover it up there, but I can't. There is the mini crude contract if you want to run a wider stop. Otherwise, here's a macro pullback. Can I cover it to there? I can. This is going to be a bit of a nail biter though. Okay, I'm going to put that on the shelf for the moment because I want to keep an eye on this eagle trade. So here comes now the red bar buy signal. And yes, it is a valid red bar buy. And the market may well continue higher from here. Given the context, I would recommend dialing down the risk amount in case we see a reversal here, or perhaps just getting more aggressive with your stops, or wait for a second push on the entry. We have that option as well.
So we've got a couple of ways that we can try to protect ourselves. All right, so here comes the failure. This is now going to be our third signal. So technically, one, two, three, textbook rule of three, I'll delay my entry until we take out this low. No particular reason other than I'm a chicken. <laughs> Yeah, so Marlene, if I haven't answered your question, I'll go over it again. Marlene asks, so how would you decide if you should take the red bar by on the eagle? So what Marlene is looking at is this red bar by that's forming right here. Well, first off, let's go through it bar by bar. Here's the red bar by, but we're currently against the ATR. We've already breached this little swing low, kind of nibbled through it, nothing too significant. But since we're against the ATR and the momentum at the moment seems to be lower, why do I say that? Well, because we've got a lower swing high. Remember how I said whoever controls the last swing controls the market. So right now the sellers are in control. So here come the buyers, and now the buyers need to prove themselves. While we're against the ATR, we've already reach this little bit of a swing low here, I'm getting a little suspicious of the buyers. So I would, first off, I would make the ATR flip over. All right, so there's the ATR, it's now flipped over. <coughs> Excuse me, this now becomes my signal bar. So should I take this uh, signal bar? Well, I could, um, but given what's come before, I would definitely dial down the risk or just go in with a single. So I'm going to enter here, I'm going to cover here, and I'm going to try to be more aggressive with my stops. Why? Well, because I've already got the makings of a rule of three, and we know that when we get a rule of three, it kind of signals or might be signaling the end of a trend. We don't know yet. It's, in fact, the buyers may pull the market up and it may continue higher from here, but it's starting to look like, well, maybe it will falter. So my objective is to perhaps get up to this trend line, uh, perhaps manage my trade a little bit more aggressively. I'm certainly going to limit my risk exposure as much as I can. Uh, probably dial down the risk amount or I usually just go to manual mode because I have it preset at, at a single. So from here on out it's really your call whatever you think is best. If you're going to manage your trade a little bit more aggressively you'd probably roll your stops right there and oh we're holding on so far Actually, I'm going to come back to, oh, see now, th this signal printed the exact same place as we took this trade here. It has so far failed to reach our profit objective. It's gone high enough to hit the break-even trigger when it reversed here. But the market is clearly struggling. So again, it's either going to end up in a sideways trading range today in which case it's going to be tough slogging. Or it's going to fall apart and head lower. But to answer your question, Marlene, it is a valid signal. I would be a little bit suspicious because the sellers have shown serious commitment to selling here. 
right? Because the buyer should have been able to recover the trend at this point. It should have turned into one of these where the market just kept going and it took, made another leg up and then started to reverse and the whole process starts over again. But they couldn't. They failed here. So that tells me there's some pretty aggressive sellers around the 43, 52, 53 mark. Buyers recovered here. And they're still trying. They're still trying to recover. Our stops would be right here. But as far as the validity of the signal, the validity of the signal is, is there. It is a high probability signal. <clears throat> Pardon me. It is a high probability signal. It is worth trying. And if you currently find yourself long, the best thing you can do is just kind of protect yourself, keep your stops nearby. And if you happen to get stopped out, well, then you have a pretty good idea prices aren't going to head higher, in which case you can set up to short the market on a move lower. <clears throat> yeah, David says um, the next DTS bird can be the chicken hawk. <laughs> You know, we we used to joke about that when we were uh, when Adam was coming up with with names for the birds. The chicken trader. Uh, the advanced decline getting a little bit lopsided here. Jim says we got eleven forty four on the buy and sixteen hundred on the sell. So a little bit more selling pressure. We'll see whether or not that translates into a move lower. No denying mucho resistance here at 4355-ish. Once you take this red bar buy signal, because it's a high probability signal, we do anticipate some follow through. When the market starts to languish and it seems like your upward momentum has disappeared, I tend to get a little bit more aggressive with my stop. Now, sometimes, as you've all seen, I end up stopping myself out of a trade early. But that's how it goes sometimes. It's we're we're playing the odds. We're playing the probabilities. It's like when you go to Las Vegas and you're the reason there's so many blackjack tables in Vegas is because the educated gambler knows that their best odds are at blackjack or you pretty much have even odds on craps. Those are the two games, blackjack and craps, where you have a fair, a fair game, a fair shake at winning anyway. And that's what we're doing with the high probability signals. We know the high probability signals at least give us a fair chance to win. They don't always all pan out, but we have at least a chance. Okay, so we're sellers giving us a little bit of an early reaction here. When you start to see the market nibble through these old support areas or resistance areas on the upshot. Um, that sometimes tells you that where it's going to try to go. Okay, so I've got my entry just below the low here 
and there's a fair amount of buying on these lows right we know the buyers are kind of hunkered down right in this area therefore if we hit this this low around the 4337 4336 zone uh, that might cause a, a little bit of a sell off it might cause the buyers to realize they're on the wrong side of the trade ditch their positions and that can help spur the market lower for us now I said the support and resistance line was here around 4320 I'm not going to be greedy but let's see if we can get 4321 and I'll roll my break even here to 4326 come on down Uh, wasn't 43.20 a, a key number yesterday? Didn't we bounce around 43.20 a bunch yesterday? Well, here we are again, looking at 43.20 to, to uh, influence the market. So what we're looking at now is we're looking at the buyers trying to recover here off of the lows. Our band has turned over. On the Raptor, we're probably getting a cloud crossover. Yes, we are. So at this point, we would expect the sellers to uh, recover the market and continue lower as the market tries to drift into this hard edge. We would anticipate the late sellers to become more aggressive and try to sell more aggressively. Actually, I should be taking my profit objective off of the high probability signal, which is going to put it right here. Let's put our break even there. Pardon me. Yeah, this is starting to look a whole lot like a trading range to me. Where was that follow through? Stinkers. So you see one more red bar buy. Here come the buyers trying to buy the market up again. And here according to Trade Forecaster, the trend mode is slipping away. And we're going to be in scalp mode in about 10 minutes time. Well, that kind of... is what we expected.
Come on. Oh. <laughs> Come on. They know they want to go lower. I don't know why they're being so stubborn, but there they are. All right, here comes the red bar by. Looking back into the hard edge, looking for the sellers to recover the market now. If the sellers lose their grip, then we're going to need to get much more aggressive with our stops. Come on, sellers. Let's go. Haven't got all day. All right, well, we'll put that over there for now. Uh, crude getting a little bit stronger. And our hawk has changed into yellow bars. And we're starting to get the, the makings of a possible trend change. But overall, as I pointed out earlier, crude very much in a sideways range today. Or for most of the session. Okay, things are heating up on the Eagle trade. Oh boy, come on. <laughs> There's nobody out there. <laughs> yeah. Tony says Jim just put Friday the thirteenth voodoo on uh, on crude oil. Alright, so here now is our first with trend signal. Um, the rule of three, because it is a counter trend signal, you don't always need to take it. You can just use it as an early warning. You can see we produced our signal pretty much the same area. Well, we're starting to get a little bit stagnant again, so I'm going to adopt a more aggressive stop strategy.
more aggressive than leaving it above the swing high is what I mean. All right, here they go. They're going to give it one more push. There we go. Okay. I'm going to roll my break even back to where I had it. Oops. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Keep hitting the scroll wheel by mistake. All right, well, they're struggling, but I think we're going to catch a break here and actually see them drift, hopefully down to our big profit target. Um, of course, there's nothing wrong with taking the high probability target, which may actually be a good idea on a day like today, given that the market seems a little bit slow on the slow side. I think we're going to close up the room a little bit early. It is Friday after all. doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on. So I uh, hope you guys have yourselves a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you again on Monday the 15th. Middle of the month already. Wow. All right, you guys. Um, yeah, take it easy. Be careful. We'll talk to you on Monday. Bye for now.